In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the whole overall upcoming pattern where we're going to be taking a look at the tropics where we have a lot of activity in the eastern Pacific, but also along the east coast. Some more concerns a little bit sooner rather than later for some tropical activity happening along the eastern seaboard. We will be going over those temperatures, which are absolutely beautiful outside. I don't know if you've ever, you know, stepped outside the last couple of days, but it feels phenomenal. Those fall-like temperatures came at just the right time, I feel like. I mean, it's just, I'm just soaking it in. It feels amazing outside. And we do expect those to continue for a little while. We're going to go over that. Could be the majority of August, even. Uh, and then we're going to go over the overall storminess. So let's dive into the tropics. And unfortunately, this small one um, acted up at the end. So that's why we get this kind of like blank image at the end. Kind of unesthetic, but we'll live. Uh, taking a look at the eastern Pacific here, we obviously have our tropical storm gill that we've been discussing. And that one is expected to head generally north of Hawaii over time. But it will be kind of breaking up as that happens. Uh, this red area here is a 60% chance of development over the next two days. So a little bit better odds than a flip of a coin that this one will develop, but 80% chance over the next seven days. So much more likely than not that we see this one develop. And we can tell on this GFS model run uh, that we actually do see uh, this system really develop there, move somewhere along the lines of where Gil is headed, something very similar, but becomes a pretty intense tropical cyclone there. And then this area closer up to the coastline of Western Mexico uh, has a 0% chance of development over the next two days, but a 40% chance over the next seven. So a little bit under a coin flip odds there, but we can see a lot of moisture head into that area. And this particular model run does show development eventually there. Uh, so very interesting stuff. Let's move over to the Atlantic side of things. And I'm going to pause it actually, because this area here, it's kind of prophetic because yesterday I predicted that the National Hurricane Center would be adding a risk level, at least, off the East Coast. And literally within 24 hours, uh, we have one there. I don't know how I always predict that type of stuff. It's kind of weird, but uh, we do see a 30% chance of development over the next two days and the next seven days. The reason why there isn't a higher chance in the long range is because this is expected to happen relatively soon. We're looking at the fourth here. We just see a lot of moisture in that area. Uh, we do eventually see a little bit more activity coming together. This is by the seventh here, and we see this kind of cluster of storms offshore of the Outer Banks, pretty well offshore, kind of just hanging out and getting a little bit more intense there. As time goes on, it kind of pushes back westward, which is a little bit concerning, bringing more of those bands to North Carolina, Virginia, with some showers, uh, some thunderstorms, and perhaps some wind. Definitely, uh, it's been an odd hurricane season. Technically, based on where we're at on August 2nd, it has been a below average activity hurricane season so far. But about 90% of the hurricane season is still ahead of us, at least in the like averages sense. Not 90% of time left, but just 90% of the average activity will be ahead of us for the rest of August into September and even into October. We can see by this point on 8 p.m. August 9th, it looks very, very intense, and it moves nowhere near where this is showing. We see this one moving almost directly northward uh, towards the Delmarva, towards New Jersey, and even towards southern New England, thankfully narrowly dodging those areas, but it does strike very close to Nova Scotia uh, up here, as you can see. Sorry, it wasn't on screen there for a second, but it is right here, bringing some impacts to Nova Scotia. So really, we would see indirect impacts to pretty much North Carolina, northward, all the way through coastal Canada from this system. And this is looking at August 13th. So that's when it would be said and done about 11 days from now. Definitely going to be a topic we're going to be watching very, very closely. A little bit of a concerning look. And I can tell you right now, we're not going to be going over the sea surface temperatures today, but they are ripe off the East Coast. We're looking at temperatures well above average in the oceans off of the east coast definitely uh just a kind of bad recipe for potential for development of course it's just a chance right now the national hurricane center has us at a 30 percent chance so there's a really good chance this does not develop but this particular model run that we're looking at right now does show that and we're going to consider that a possibility as of now uh definitely something that we will keep our eyes on over the next days and even the next week or two
let's go ahead and move over to uh, the European model. And as we just take a look, again, a couple things to note. Obviously, we're going to be watching this area off the East Coast. And also, we're going to be seeing a lot of storminess across the Deep South and Southeast. This is going to last days and even potentially weeks. Heavy rainfall. This area is going to be above average, well above average as far as precipitation. Let's keep watching this play out. This is as we move towards tomorrow on Sunday. We do see a little bit of lower pressure trying to get going. They're well offshore of North Carolina. By Sunday afternoon, the 3rd, we see continued thunderstorm activity in the southeast and also the plains seeing their fair share of thunderstorms ongoing for Sunday on the 3rd. As we just keep moving along Monday on the 4th here, uh, we don't see much in the way of low pressure out here anymore. We see a little bit uh, well offshore, but in general, uh, nothing happening yet. We do see kind of continued thunderstorms in the deep south and southeast. I want to keep us going towards Tuesday the 5th, and this is a day where we kind of rebound with heavier precipitation in the southeast than the day prior on Monday the 4th. So kind of up and down with that activity, but it's still just there every single day for the most part. Looking towards Wednesday here on the 6th, again, even parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley getting in on some of these thunderstorms just kind of present in the southeast corner of the nation. Looking towards Thursday here, we see a lot of Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia here getting the heart of those thunderstorms. Thursday on August 7th, definitely something to think about. Uh, by Friday the 8th, again, we just get these pockets of storminess off the East Coast, but it doesn't look like any of this is going to develop on this European model. So for now, what we're going to be left with, in my opinion, is the GFS model saying yes, the European model saying no, which kind of brings us into a model battle, if you will, where we're going to have to just track these daily, which... You know, for the most part, I enjoy those types of things because it's fun to talk about, it's fun to watch, it's fun to try to predict what's going to happen. But when we're talking about dangerous situations like this, it is a little bit um, bad. <laughs> Just, I mean, not even a little, but it's it's very bad because people need to know what's going to be happening. And if the models are disagreeing, there's huge question marks. Uh, there's definitely a lot left to figure out. Also, I think it's worth noting that there's a ton of activity in the northern Gulf here. Anything could pop off at any point in these areas as well. Uh, with that being said, let's move towards Saturday, where a lot of this activity is closer to Florida. Again, nothing's really developed by this point. Sunday on the 10th, similar areas just continuing to see storminess. Again, the deep south, southeast, and pretty much all these areas offshore as well of those similar locations. We once again see the Midwest, Plains, and even some of the southern uh, Rockies seeing a lot of thunderstorms and showers around for Sunday on the 10th as well. Here's Monday the 11th. Again, activity very close to Florida, but really for the whole southeast. Tuesday on the 12th here, very similar with the east coast. Wednesday, a little quieter, but again, we're looking offshore, and there's just a couple of areas where you could see some low pressure start to develop. Uh, that's going to be the theme through August, I think, and really, as we move into September, it's going to become a lot more concerning than that even. Uh, for Thursday, the 14th, off the southeast and along that southeast coast, we have activity. And also for some of the Midwest and Great Lakes here, we're seeing thunderstorms present underneath a pretty weak low there for southern Canada. Uh, this is in the long range, so take it with a grain of salt, at least for specific details. But this is kind of what we're seeing from the model for today. Friday, the 15th here, we see a lot of activity in the eastern half of the nation overall. Saturday, the 16th, same thing, very, very active. And then this is the end of the model run. So we do see towards the 10th 15th time frame maybe even more activity in the eastern half of the nation than before so there is some signs on this model at least that we are going to be seeing more and more and more activity um definitely very interesting something we will keep our eyes on i wanted to show you something else interesting this is the european ai and uh model so this is basically the way to look at it and i don't even fully understand how the the components of you know how they built this model if i did i'd probably just make one myself obviously but there is components of the regular european model in this one at least the calculations that it uses and the algorithms and everything like that but it also has ai uh machine learning included in it so this model constantly updates itself based on how it does with real life situations and tries to constantly improve itself this one has been around for at least six months. I can remember using it in the winter time a little bit with you guys and going over it, which was very fun and cool to see. Uh, so it has had multiple updates since then. Uh, obviously, this is one. They've probably been testing this thing out for multiple hurricane seasons, but this is 
the first hurricane season. I've used it personally, and it's worth noting, uh, we'll watch this area here off the southeast, but also we're going to see a system at some point uh, want to head towards the United States from the middle of the Atlantic. Keep in mind, for the most part, this is an experimental product, so we are looking at it for educational purposes, for entertainment purposes, just because it's fun to look at this type of stuff. It's really cool. And hopefully we can learn more. And hopefully this will be a really cool, useful tool in the future. Uh, so we're kind of watching history here. Anyway, with all that being said, maybe we'll get something useful away from it. We do see that system off of North Carolina does develop a little bit there. Uh, and it does move generally northeastward, which is kind of expected. Uh, but it stays relatively weak on this European AI model, probably at max, becoming a tropical storm here, according to this one. And by the time we're looking at the sixth here, this is just a few days from now, we do see this pocket across what we call the MDR between the Caribbean and Africa. MDR short for main development region. And this has been forecasted for about a week now to set up. And when we get these situations, anything can kind of spin off of it and take off. I think that's what we're going to see happen here, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, we do see this one develop, kind of just come off of that flat wave and start to spin up a little bit here. I'll point out exactly where it is. It's right here. It's also worth noting that we have another one coming off of Africa right there, another wave. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. We do get another East Coast area there, as you can see. Doesn't really develop too much, and that's sometime between the 8th, 9th, 10th. But here comes this one towards the Bahamas. Um, as a more intense cyclone... Definitely tropical storm status, maybe even hurricane status uh, as it crosses over Florida. And then it drops rapidly in pressure here over the Gulf. Uh, I'll move us over to the Gulf, actually, to make things easier. Um, and I got to set us to the right model run. Here we go. So we see it enter into the Gulf there over top of Florida. It's 1,005, so probably more like a tropical storm. Uh, but then it rapidly goes from 1,005 down to 997. This is by the 16th. 990. Uh, and even 985 striking kind of eastern Louisiana. This is extremely far out, and this is also an experimental product. So when you take those two things and kind of just think about it for a second, it's like, okay, this is kind of something you really need to take with a grain of salt. Again, we'll keep track of this model. When it comes to the tropical cyclones this year, or like potential tropical cyclones, I really want to start watching every single model and kind of going over it with you guys so we can really get an idea of every potential scenario. Even though it's very far out, even though it's an experimental product, these products are amazing. They're incredible products. Um, just incredible how they work. And if a model shows it, in my opinion, unless it's a complete glitch or something, it is technically possible and that's how we're going to treat it. So we'll be watching uh, those waves coming off of Africa because some models are on board with that becoming developed and maybe heading towards the Caribbean or even the Gulf. Something to think about and watch. The specific location is something that we really want to take with a grain of salt because what are the odds that it's correct about the exact path straight into eastern Louisiana? Very low because once it gets to Florida, you would have a possible you know, Florida Panhandle, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, it could really go anywhere from that point. So think about it all the way back, you know, just off of Africa and do that same kind of spread in your mind. I mean, it could go out to sea, it could head towards the Caribbean, it could just head south towards South America and break up. Anything is possible, but we'll be watching it very, very closely. The total precipitation, uh, it's really the same as it's been for days. Northern Plains and Upper Midwest, and southeast areas are the two areas we're watching the most here. And when we look at the anomalies, we can see well above average, almost twice your average here in the southeast corner, especially Georgia. It's probably the highest one on here. South Carolina, parts of eastern Alabama, northern Florida, North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, Virginia. These states look to see exceptionally above average precipitation. And then we see more generally above average precipitation for the northern plains and upper Midwest. And for the most part, it's actually mostly drier everywhere else. So we have a couple of spots or a couple of regions that we can point out as to having above, but almost everywhere else is pretty well below average, believe it or not. Looking at the total snowfall, we're also going into this because look at the Rockies. If you look very closely in states like Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, those are actually the only three. We do see a little bit of grays popping up, which is perhaps indicating some flakes flying at some point over the next two weeks. 
maybe a dusting to, you know, half an inch or an inch of snowfall uh, just over the next couple of weeks on the very highest mountaintops. And the reason I'm showing this is because, you know, it's very exciting. It's the beginning signs of the season coming, which is funny because I think in early July, uh, maybe it was late June, but we still had snowfall happening in some of the Rockies as well. So we didn't even get a month off from the snowfall at all, if this is the case. Pretty crazy stuff. Now, finally, let's go over the temperatures. We can see the cooler temperatures that have arrived. They are significantly below average temperatures, 10 to 15 degrees below average in these green regions. And we even see some whites and kind of like a purplish blue popping up there in western North Carolina. That's going to be closer to 20 to 25 degrees below normal. So really significant uh, cool air for this time of year that is around. Uh, bringing us from what should be peak summertime heat to something more reminiscent of early to mid fall time temperatures. Really beautiful. I've seen people down in like um, the deeper south commenting like it doesn't feel like fall out. And it's important to note that those areas typically uh, in September or October, which is more so of what we're referring to, it's still very hot and they see more fall like conditions later on. So it's not going to feel like November for your area. It's not going to feel like December, but something more reminiscent of like late September into October temperatures, whatever that is for your area. That's a little bit more on par with what we're seeing here. Uh, so the third fifth here, here's the fifth. We're seeing it's becoming a little bit more exclusive for the Southeast and something that's changing the, the pattern here is these cooler temperatures starting to trend in for the West. This is going to eventually rebound the warmth, starting with the central states. They'll warm up first, and then the east coast will finally warm up likely around the 10th time frame or a little bit after. So let's watch this play out. We see the central states start to warm around the 7th here, Thursday. Again, that cold blob over the northwest is really the main factor here. The eastern seaboard staying a little cooler still by the 7th. And here by the 10th, we can see the southeast is still holding on to some of it, um, but the West warms back up and we do have some cooler air maybe trying to move in. So maybe we're going to be a little bit back and forth here during August. Uh, the it, it is ensemble model, so it starts to get really wonky and just show kind of the same thing every single day, as you can see. And that's kind of usually when we toss it out and say, okay, this isn't useful anymore. So time will tell. We'll go over it with you guys over the coming days and weeks. But I am excited for the cool temperatures and I can't wait for more of them in September and October. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about the fall time and the winter time coming up very soon. I've seen you guys' comments asking about the fall forecast, the winter forecast, and everything in between. Those are coming soon. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.